Football is a very violent game with a lot of militaristic principles, a la the age-old saying, next man up. And two teams that have had to make that phrase become a reality are the Seattle Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys. Now the key injuries that they've suffered may feel like a kick in the gut, but technically they aren't completely out of the playoff picture just yet. So between the two, who's more likely to make the playoffs? The pylon has that answer for you right now. Ah, the phrase next man up is supposed to be a way to galvanize the troops and make sure no one player feels like they're bigger than the entire team. And while I do agree, no one player is bigger than the entire team, the entire organization, it's still very clear that there are some players that are leagues above the person that backs them up. Over on the Dallas Cowboys side, you got an injury to the best left tackle in football that's been clearly hindering the offense. Your star running back has no sense of delayed gratification like all millennials do and is out for the foreseeable future with a suspension and probably the roughest stretch of their schedule. And the heart and soul of your defense has been in and out dealing with some nicks and bruises. Fly on over to Seattle and two of the top four leaders on your team, on the most rec recognizable unit on your team, are out with very serious injuries. The offensive line has been banged up for how many years now? In Seattle, you're literally left depending on the brilliance of Russell Wilson. These are two of the most popular franchises in all of football, and straight up, it's better for the NFL's bottom line, their pockets, if both of them are playing for an extended period of time in the postseason. But the way it's looking with schedules and the playoff picture, there's only room for one. And while I do genuinely think the Cowboys went into the season as a better built team than the Seahawks, which means they could sustain more injury losses, they sustained every last key injury slash suspension they possibly could. And in that span of time, Dak Prescott, while I think he's still really good, has been a completely different player. I know it's only his second year, so I'm not going to get too down on him, but at least the guy still has a better offensive line in front of him than Russell Wilson does. Wilson is just simply a magician back there who was on the verge of entering the top tier of quarterbacks if he can really drag this thing into the postseason. Yeah, I'm talking the tier only the likes of Brady, Breeze, and Aaron Rodgers can say they're in. Hell, he might even surpass Breeze, in my opinion, in that upper echelon. But as far as America's team goes, sorry. I thought they'd be in the Super Bowl, but it's clearly wrong. The Cowboys run is over. Uh, better luck next year. I've made it very clear about my feeling on just how important quarterbacks are. If they're on a good team, they look good. If they're on a bad team, they look bad. They're just a key cog in the whole entire mechanism that is a football team. But there are those rare instances, a la an Aaron Rodgers, a la Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, those rare instances where one player, one quarterback can carry the entire franchise. And Mr. Sierra himself, is on the verge of entering that territory. 